Uh, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Luyanda Bala. Uh, not to be confused with my namesake, Luyanda Mbanga. Uh, we have a little devotion that I'd like to share with you. Uh, we're going to be reading from two books, the book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to verse 14. And then we are going to also briefly look at uh, the book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. When we turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12, it reads as follows. How, th how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Here we are listening to a story where the prophet Isaiah is asking the devil, how he has fallen from such a lofty and high position that he was placed in in heaven how did it come about that this man called lucifer would be thrown down and cast out of heaven how did it happen that he would be able to forsake such a high position which god truly highly esteemed and god truly blessed the man with all manner of gifts as we know that he was the angel which was highly favored and more blessed in heaven. We also read in the Bible about his musical talents as well, that he would be able to sing out multiple part harmonies with his single voice. So this was truly a man who was uh, endowed by God. Even his robes, we hear of precious stones that adorned his robes. This was truly a man blessed by God. How did it come about then, therefore, that this man is cast out of heaven? And in these verses we read that it was because of what he has, or he had stated or told himself in his heart that he will ascend above the throne of God that he will establish his own kingdom such that it sits above the kingdom of God. This is what Lucifer wanted to achieve. He wanted to place his kingdom above that of God. After being created by God, being a creature created by the hands of God, he then hatched up this evil plan in his heart that said he would ascend and be like the Most High. He is not proposing anything new when we read these verses that he will add to this kingdom of God. Instead he says, I want my kingdom to be like the kingdom of the Most High. The only difference in his kingdom is the intention because he now no longer wanted to bring glory to God. Instead, he wanted all the glory to come to himself. It is because of him wanting glory that he now wants to embark on an evil mission of setting up his throne above the throne of God. Let us for a moment have a look at uh, what God is also saying in the book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. And it says, I will paraphrase, that when God had looked upon the earth, this is now before the flood. God saw that the thoughts and imaginations of men were evil continually. In other words, everything that man would think of, everything that man would imagine was just evil continually. And as the verses go, God says he regretted ever creating man. He repented within himself for creating a man that would now want to do evil 
all the days of his life. And in, 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 in verse 11 of uh, the book of, uh, rather, chapter 11 of the book of Genesis, we see God bringing about uh, the flood in the later chapters that follow. What is mind-blowing about these texts that we've just read? It is not specifically or particularly focusing at actions that the Israelites embarked upon in the book of Genesis. And it is not particularly focusing on the actions of the devil in the book of Isaiah chapter 14. We are looking here, God is taking us through how he views the thoughts of men, how he viewed the thoughts of Lucifer himself, because we all know we are all sitting here in the midst of the coronavirus, this side of heaven. We are all here knowing for a fact that the devil never actually had an opportunity to set up his throne above that of God. But yet he was cast out of heaven. I'm bringing it to you that God does not wait for us to bring our plans and our thoughts into action before he acts against them. To God, this simply means that he views our thoughts as if they were actions already. Whatever evil plan that we are able to hatch up in our minds and entertain, in other words, these plans go beyond just being mere temptations, but it is plans that we entertain, it is thoughts that we, we, we incubate in our minds. It is thoughts that we allow to fester and then God sees the progression of these thoughts and then God wants to put an end to these evil plans that we have. God counts every thought, every imagination in our mind as an action. God counts everything that we plan, everything that we want to do, whether it is good or it is bad as an action as well. We all know, as I've stated, that Lucifer did not get an opportunity to set his throne above the throne of God. But it was for his thoughts that he was kicked out of heaven. I would like to propose to you, brothers and sisters, that we guard the avenues of our hearts, we guard the avenues of our minds. We all know that human beings we are predominantly creatures of our own environments. The circumstances we place ourselves in, the books that we read, uh, the programs that we watch on the television, all those mold our thoughts and our imaginations. Now it is this environment that allows evil to fester and be incubated and if we place ourselves continually around evil influences, then our thoughts will be evil continually. And this the Lord has a problem with. We need to guard the avenues of our hearts and minds. Therefore, I am saying to us, I am saying these words to you as I am saying them to myself that let us guard the avenues of our hearts. Let us guard the avenues of our minds. Let us feed on the precious word of God so that our thoughts may be pure, our thoughts may be in accordance with the obedience of God. So that God, when he looks at, looks at us, he will not repent within himself why he created us. He placed us on this earth for a special purpose to fulfill towards his cause. Let us therefore place our energies and our time in the fulfillment of that purpose. And if we have not yet found our purpose, let us endeavor to find why God placed us on this earth so that God may not repent within himself why he created us. With those words, I'd like the Lord to bless us. I'd like the Lord to keep us. 
and place us on the path of righteousness. Amen.